Well, hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Kovac Enterprises. Uh, this is going to be episode number three in the series, or excuse me, episode number two. Um, we made a little bit more progress on the uh, model itself. Uh, we were basically working on uh, number three in the instruction booklet for the chassis and wheel, putting everything kind of together. And uh, this is the uh, result that you see here in front of you. Uh, let me kind of bring this in a little bit more so we can see what's going on. <clears throat> uh, first of all, we put the wheels together, and I know it's kind of hard to see, but uh, you know, the chrome part of the rims themselves. Uh, I kind of toned it down a little bit by putting a little bit of some black wash on it by using the uh, Craft Smart uh, black satin and basically watered it down and then kind of brushed it in to, like I said, tone down the uh, the chrome a little bit to kind of dirty it up uh, so it wasn't so bright. So, like I said, that's the uh, one side of it. Of course, the other side is, is basically the same way. Uh, we went ahead and installed the uh, battery in the uh, water jar so to speak uh, did a little detail work on the battery itself by uh, first painting it uh, black again and then using the sharpie uh, bronze metallic uh, for some of the uh, battery cells on there and then the uh, basically silver sterling for the uh, terminals I guess you want to call it so and uh, and I kind of, you know, place the battery as you see right there. It's kind of hard to tell, <clears throat> you know, by looking at the instructions. That's why I had to kind of look at uh, other people's videos to see where the actual placement is because I say uh, with the AMT instructions, it's kind of hard to uh, tell where the exact, exact position is. You know, they're saying battery to the rib it'll meant for the straight and they just kind of show you a dashed line and point an arrow down here on the bottom of the the chassis itself so uh, that's basically where I put it and uh, there you see it right there and of course on the other side was the uh, water jar now if you kind of notice too with the water jar I did a little bit something different this time around um, of course I initially painted it uh, white and then I added some blue to it to kind of uh, represent that it's got some uh, fluid actually in the uh, jar itself. And what I used for that was this, uh, kind of bring it in here. Uh, basically it's a uh, folk art uh, look at me blue color. It's a multi-surface. And uh, I just kind of applied that with a brush on that. And then, of course, uh, we got the uh, capping uh, black itself there. And uh, I say once everything was kind of uh, glued in, uh, I went ahead and uh, used my future uh, pledge and brushed everything down to seal the paint uh, at this point of the uh, build itself. So. Uh, everything's looking good and nice and shiny and clean so that's where we're at um, oh, so there you go so that is that end of it and we also did a little bit more work on the um, let me see if I can bring this up a little bit we also did some work on the actual dash or sorry firewall itself um, just some little detail work there. We uh, initially started with the uh, uh, black paint from the Craftsmart and then we used the uh, silver sterling uh, to accent the uh, other parts of the uh, firewall and then just kind of took a little toothpick and just kind of uh, dabbed where it needed to go just to kind of uh, bring it out a little bit. Didn't want to get too crazy with it but uh, there's our firewall on that. And uh, that's where we are as far as that part of it. Um, as far as the interior bucket, uh, uh, picking out a color scheme for it, uh, I'm thinking about red for the interior and for the actual body of the uh, Stingray. 
uh, I'm thinking kind of like a some sort of a blue color to kind of accent it a little bit so uh, that's going to be our next step as far as uh, the paint scheme goes so uh, stand by and we will be right back with uh, the following uh, paint that I chose so see you know see in a little bit Okay, moving right along, uh, we went ahead and uh, airbrushed on the interior bucket of the uh, 63 Corvette. Uh, this is pertaining to the uh, number four step, as you can see here, uh, as we're going to go ahead and assemble the rest of the parts. But uh, for right now, I'll show you what I've done in this case. We'll bring this on in. And uh, we went ahead and airbrushed uh, the interior bucket. Uh, and uh, for this particular paint, I used the uh, bright red uh, from Craftsmart. So we use that in our Pache airbrush. And this is the result. So here we go. So you can see right there. And then, of course, for the finer details, uh, basically brushed in the uh, gas pedal and the uh, brake and clutch and uh, as you can s kind of see right here we've got the uh, center console as far as the using a toothpick and dabbing it with some uh, it was the uh, silver sterling from folk art uh, just to accent that part of it like I said there's not too much detail in this AMT uh, molding of the interior bucket but we're just kind of did the best we can. You can see we did some of the uh, door handles and a few other little features there just to kind of give a little bit of some interest. So there's that one side there. And we turn around, basically it's the same on the passenger side. There's that. And then of course once everything is painted and detailed in on this we went ahead and brushed in some of the uh, future floor polish from Pledge. Uh, just to seal in the paint. Alright, so that is done for the interior bucket. And then uh, we went ahead and uh, started on the detailing of the actual dashboard. Again, uh, we used the uh, uh, airbrush to do the uh, dashboard itself in the bright red. And uh, as far as the instrument panel and the uh, glove box, we uh, basically hand painted the uh, black uh, satin from Craftsmart there so we just painted that all in black and then we came back with our sterling silver with a toothpick and uh, just highlighted the uh, like I said the dials and gauges of the uh, dashboard itself that's including the radio and uh, like I said in the uh, glove box and all that kind of stuff so and then once again, once everything was painted and everything, everything was satisfied, we went ahead and brushed in some of the uh, future floor polish, again, to seal in the paint. And then, of course, we have our seat belts and our steering wheel. Um, as far as the steering wheel itself, uh, we went ahead and used the Folk Art Dark Brown, kind of get a little bit of some color to it. And again, with the uh, chrome part for the uh, steering itself uh, the sterling silver from the folk art so that there and of course then we can kind of turn around because this is the side of the seat belts right here so uh, yeah we just you know for the buckles and everything we just a uh, sterling silver as well I may change the seat belts to a darker tone of red um, so we will kind of look into that and with that being said, we'll go ahead and uh, take these off the sprue tree and uh, go ahead and glue everything in to uh, complete the assembly of the interior bucket. So uh, stand by, we'll be right back. Well, here I go with the uh, finished product as far as the uh, interior bucket is concerned. Uh, we went ahead and glued on the uh, dashboard steering wheel and the uh, shifter as well as the uh, two seat belts um, so that is all glued and cured now 
uh, as far as the seat belts are concerned. Uh, I gave it a little bit of a different color. Uh, we went ahead and used the Holiday Red from Craftsmart just to give it a little bit of an accent to offset the uh, bright red for the rest of the interior of the bucket. But uh, here is the finished product for the uh, interior bucket. So I think it came out pretty nice. Alright, so that's the completion steps one through four so far in the instructions. And uh, we're getting close to the finish line. Uh, basically, as far as the AMT instructions are concerned, there's maybe only two steps left. And uh, that's pertaining to the body, putting everything together there. And then the uh, final assembly as far as the uh, uh, you know, gluing the chassis to the body as well as the uh, putting in the rear and front bumpers and the license plate. So we're almost there. Probably the uh, next episode will be the finale of the uh, 63 Corvette from AMT. And uh, with that being said, uh, we will catch you on the uh, next episode. And I hope everybody has a good day and we will catch you later. Bye.